Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. We're here with Mark Spencer and we're going to look at linking, right? Linking in motion or linking... <laughs> Yeah, linking in motion, let's call it that. Okay. Yeah, linking in motion. We were talking earlier about what we're calling this, and it's, I come up with very long, complicated technical names, and you come up with very short, pithy, visual yeah, what, names. What I call this episode, linking. So, <laughs> so here's the deal, is a lot of people are using motion now to create effects for Final Cut Pro. Right. right for Final Cut Pro 10, generators, titles, transitions. And um, there is a behavior in motion called the link behavior that can be extremely helpful when you're modifying templates from Final Cut. Well, when you're setting templates up in motion to be modified in Final Cut. And I wanted to show okay. how you can use that because I think a lot of people out here, if you're, even if you're just using motion on its own, you want to understand this behavior because it's very powerful. So I'm starting with a simple example because I'm going to get to something more complicated that you're not even going to want to, you're going to want to see the result but not the inner workings of. Right. Um, It'll scare them if you start with Yeah, that. it scares me. Okay. So this is a very simple, I've got a gradient background and I've got these three circle shapes. And my goal is I want to change the color. I want to keep the color of all three consistent. And I want to be able to change the color of all three um, in Final Cut Pro. But I want them to change them all at the same time. I want them to stay the, them all to be the same color. And frequently in a template, you might have multiple elements that you want them to stay, have a har harmony. You might have some reds here and some blues here, and whatever, right. but you want the reds to all stay red. Or if you change them to yellow, you want them all to change the yellow. So that's right. the kind of the idea. So the way that you can do that rather, so one option is you could publish the color of each of those. Right, that's a lot of You could change all three, yeah. right? So rather, I want to be able to change all three at once. To do that, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set up a little dummy layer. Okay. Um, what so they call a null layer? Another a null layer, a dummy, dummy layer. layer. You can call it, I call it the color linker. A color linker. Yeah. So That's I'm right. going to hit R for the rectangle tool and draw it a little rectangle. Hit escape. Okay. So I've got this little rectangle. Um, I don't even need to see it, so I'm going to turn it off. And I'm just going to call it a uh, color linker because that's because that's what it does right. or will do. It doesn't do anything right now. So now I'm going to link the color of each of these shapes to it. Okay? okay, and this will work not just for a shape, but a particle system, text, replicator, anything, anything that has yeah, color in it somewhere, or, yeah, gradient, like. anything that has any color in it, you can link. And it's just, this link behavior works to link anything, not just color, but this is a good example of it. So let's start with this bottom one. And what I'm gonna do is add that behavior. So I'll go to library, and I'll go to behaviors, and then it's actually a parameter behavior. So you could select it here under parameter behaviors, uh, we'll go down and... There's a link here. There it there. is, link right there, okay. So that's one way that you could do is drag it on, but the best way really with any parameter behavior is to find the parameter that you want to affect and then apply it. So in this case, if I go to the inspector and we go to the... We have to figure out what is affecting the color here. In this case, it's the brush color. Okay, see that's white there. We have no fill, but we have a brush color. So that's what I want to link to that, that dummy. So what I'm going to do is just click the little uh, menu right here, the far right. You can also right click on the words brush color. I'm going to choose uh, add, add behavior, parameter behavior. Link. Link, yeah, add that guy on. It shows up dif disabled by default because it doesn't know what to link to. And over here in the behaviors tab and also in the heads up display. It's a drop well. Yeah, source object well here. So I'm going to drag this color linker I want to link to here. And it says, okay, I will link uh, this object's brush color to its brush color. Now, you don't have to link brush color to brush color. You could link to drop shadow, object shape, outline, or fill. There's all kind of things, but it, it guesses what the best thing is if right. there's a in parallel case, thing in there. Right. In this case, that uh, is actually not what we want because this shape doesn't have an outline. It's just a fill. So what I'm gonna do is click, uh, choose object, shape, fill, fill. Fill color, color. all. Oh. Okay, so now you're seeing um, the drudgery of this process. Yes. Um, doing it once is no big deal, but doing a bunch of these can take a little bit of time. So, but I'm just going to set that one up, and see that change turn to green? Sure. Okay. That's the color of because the, that guy is yes. right. So, just what you'd like to now is say, oh, I'm just going to option drag that onto the next one, and the, you might you think that would work. It's not going to work. Uh, actually, here it worked. 
Frequently, that does not work. Okay. okay, I just on my laptop it did not work. Here on this machine, it is working, which is great because it's really saving us some time. So let's option drag it onto the next one. And that worked. And all three turn green. So now, if I go to this color linker guy and change his color, look at th that. They all change. Yes. Right. So now all I would need to do is publish this particular one. So I could go to um, shape, and here's its fill color. And again, I'll use the animation menu here. It's not really the animation menu now. There's so much else going on here. And choose Publish. And now if I select the project, it's a published parameter. That means if I uh, now publish this project, if I choose to uh, publish this as a template, I'm not going to do it here, but if I publish this as a template, this will show up in Final Cut Pro 10 in the inspector. And, right. then, and that one parameter control would affect all of the layers or objects that are linked to exactly. that, to so that can, null layer, to that uh, color Yeah, linker. so we can test it here, and, and we can see that it works. It does it. Works great. So this is a very simple example, but that's to give the, the idea. OK, so like, OK, I got that approach. I understand it. So and here's a great way to apply it. I'm going to choose File New. I'm not going to save the changes I just made. And what I'm going to get in the project browser is an opportunity to look at these compositions. Now, there are a bunch of um, templates that ship with motion that aren't available in Vonica Pro. Right. OK? And they're all listed in here. Atmospheric, Decode, Pulse, Skyline, all these guys. I'm going to go to one, the last one called Vine. Each one of these template collections includes three different templates. And I'm going to choose the Vine Open. And we can see a little animation right here of this. OK? So it's a little nice. Right. I know, so now I want to take that vine and I want to make all those leaves green. Yeah. So the, the, the two parts of this is even if you don't do anything with linking, like you, you forget all that, if you just want to have this template available in Final Cut Pro, you can just open it and publish it. Okay. So I'm going to choose open a copy. And once it opens, here we are in motion. Now, if I didn't care about being to change, I'm going to hit Shift Z to fit it to the window. If I didn't care about being able to modify it beyond the text, you can always modify the text, I could just choose File and choose Publish Template. And this would then be available in Final Cut, right. which on its own is a great thing, right? because right? now you could use this in Final Cut Pro 10 just by publishing it. But if you take it a little further, let's go into this um, group called Graphics. I'll hold the Option key down to open everything. And uh, you, what you're going to see, there's a lot in here. Let me make them a little smaller. So if I scroll down, there's a lot of stuff yes, in here, that's right? That's why you didn't start with this Yes, one. there's a lot of replicators and shapes and stuff. But the idea is you would go anywhere, like here's a replicator. And if I go to the inspector, I can see this replicator has a color applied. Sure. So I could link that to one of those dummies. Sure. OK, so same idea, but a much more complicated project. Right. So I'm not going to do it here, but it's the exact same steps. So you'd have to make a dummy layer and then Create the, add the for, link for each color, to it, drop, yes. the, drop that layer into the well, yes. republish it, yes. and so. And for each color that you I wanted, along, you were. You, you got the whole thing. So this one actually has, you know, there's a bunch of things that are red uh -huh. or shades of red. There's actually light red and dark red. This is a little more complicated because it uses light and dark red. Sure. And there's a light and dark blue, and there's this black one here, and there's a gradient in the background. So what I did, I actually used a couple of different color linkers. Uh, to link all this stuff to, because there's you know dozens and dozens see, of things that I have see color that. here. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. There. So here's the deal. What I did, I, I went ahead and spent the time. It, it took like an hour. It really wasn't that bad. But if I go to Final Cut Pro, we can see that this Vines is available now in the Generators browser right. because I published, published it. it. So I'll select it. I'll hit E to do an append edit and bring it into my project. Um, now you oh, are, I, I brought in a clip from the. I must not have clicked on it. Let's try that again. Click on it. E. There, there we go. go. There it is. So there is the template. Now, like I said, normally if you didn't bother to link anything, you could still, of course, change the text. Sure. But now, check this out. Because you get a link layers or, or link groups for all those different yeah. colors. You can now control the color for all the leaves. In the inspectorator, in, in the inspectorator. <laughs> I like that. In the inspector, in the generator tab. I've created um, and renamed these things to, to make clear what they control. So there's a main light, main dark. So if I, let's say I want to make those leaves yellow or like that, I can yeah. do yellow and maybe a darker yellow for the darker leaves. And the blue ones in the background, I could make, you know, more of a green yeah. color. And there's even some other elements that we didn't see in the template because they were so dark. Right. And I can bring those out. Okay. And then there's the embellishment, which is the embellishment is this kind of fancy blue thing there. So I could make that, uh, you know, any obviously any other color. I'm not going to try to color. 
this whole thing, but you get the idea. I can use those and even change this background color to something else completely because sure. I've published a, uh, a link to that. In fact, that I just published directly. I didn't link it to anything else because it's one element. But that's the basic idea that you can take all of those templates that are available in, in Motion and use that link behavior to have a great deal of creative control in Final Cut Pro 10. Right, and here we're just linking you know, colors, but you can actually obviously link all kinds of different parameters if you wanted to. Yeah, and it goes much deeper because instead of these vines, if you wanted different types of vines, you could um, use rigging to create other options in the, in the project. It goes, there's a rabbit hole. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, there you have it. You can uh, continue. What's it with you and Vines? This is the second. Oh, one. more on Vines. More I know. Vines. I know. Okay. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about how to do this stuff in motion, this guy's, this is the guy right here. And uh, he's got excellent training up at rippletraining.com, so you want to check that out. Anyway, thanks for watching yet another awesome episode of MacBreak Studio.